Hello there, a great person interested in science, perhaps. So, here we are with another reaction to a science video from Kursk Zagd about a black hole bomb. Don't know what that is, have no clue. So, yeah, I'm a quantum physicist, if you don't know it, and I will react to a video from Kursk Zagd, and they will explain stuff about black holes to me. So this time I'm going to do it a bit different, so I will watch the video first, and you can just see my reaction, and I will comment on it afterwards, I will write stuff down because I know some people um, want me to see uh, want to see me reacting to the video and if you want some science commentary from a physicist yeah stay after the video so yeah perhaps that's better for everyone and uh, yeah hope you have some fun so let's see what we have here I'm just gonna pull it up let's just start the video and let's just see what a black hole bomb and a black hole civilization is and discuss it later on so let's go Black holes are the largest collections of pure, violent energy in the universe. If you come too close, they'll devour you and add your energy to <laughs> the dark. Energy. And so, the energy is lost to us forever. Or is it? It turns out there's a universe cheat code. A way of powering civilizations until the very death of everything, or of constructing the largest bomb in the universe. But how Why, though? didn't we learn that all energy is trapped forever in black holes, even light? This is true. Everything you think you know about the weirdest thing in the universe is about to get weirder for one simple reason. Black holes are spinning. Why black holes spin? Let's see why they spin. When really, really massive stars die, their cores collapse under their own gravity into black holes. This means something very big becomes very, very tiny. Oh, yeah. The tiniest anything can be in this universe. But stars are rotating, and a fundamental property of our universe is that things that are spinning don't want to stop spinning. We call this angular momentum. And this angular momentum can't go away. A big thing that spins and becomes smaller spins faster. So, as the core of a star collapses, its momentum makes it spin faster and faster and faster until it collapses into a black hole. And the black hole keeps on spinning, inconceivably fast. Some of them spin millions of times a second. Why spinning black holes are special? Just like non-spinning black holes, spinning black holes have an event horizon and a singularity at their core where all of their mass is concentrated. The singularity is usually described as a single, infinitely small point. Oh, we we'll love to discuss stuff here so much. Can't rotate, so a rotating singularity can't be a point. Instead, it's a ringularity. A ringularity is a ring with a thickness of zero and no surface, spinning extremely fast, containing all the mass of the black hole. The black hole is spinning so fast that it morphs space and time itself. It literally drags space with it, such as its power. Yeah, that's true. It creates a new and super weird region of space-time, the ergosphere, which envelops the black hole. That's true, if yeah. If space and time are completely broken inside the event horizon, then they're only half broken inside the ergosphere. <laughs> inside the ergosphere, nothing makes sense. It's possible to enter it and then leave it again, but it's probably not a great experience. That's true. You can imagine it like this. Falling into a static black hole is like sliding down a hole. Being inside the ergosphere of a spinning black hole is like spiraling down a deadly drain. The black hole transfers its own kinetic That's energy true, yeah. in the form of rotation to everything that enters the ergosphere. The ringularity makes you dance whether you want to or not. You need to move faster than the speed of light just to stand still here, which is impossible. That's true. But here's our cheat code. Yeah. We can steal this energy. And Let's see how they do it. To steal. How to steal energy from a monster. Take the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. We could steal as much energy from it as every single star in the Milky Way emits in a billion years combined. The easiest way to steal this energy is, oddly enough, to drop something into the black hole. 
We've seen that the ringularity forces energy on us when we enter the ergosphere, which is a lot like being in a whirlpool with space-time rushing around and around. If you're clever, you can use the water to your advantage and swim faster than before. In practice, this means sending a rocket into the ergosphere and making a trade with the black hole. We give it some mass energy and it gives us some of its rotational energy. But it's not a fair trade, we get the better deal. Normally, if you fire a rocket, you exchange chemical energy for kinetic energy. Yes, this that's is true. Like pushing yourself forward in a swimming pool. But if you fire a rocket inside the ergosphere, it's like pushing yourself forward in a wave pool. The rotational energy of the waves gives you a much stronger boost than you could get just by pushing yourself. The boost from the rotation of the black hole is so big that you leave the ergosphere with much more energy than you entered it. The black hole gives a tiny amount of its rotational energy to you and slows down a little. Obviously, this requires a lot of food. Fortunately, black holes aren't picky eaters. An advanced <laughs> That's true. would probably harvest asteroids to drop them into the black hole when they needed an energy boost. But there's an even better way to get energy from a black hole, and oddly enough, it builds the biggest bomb any living thing could ever hope to build. Mm. The black hole bomb. Let's see what that is. And if the Empire should have noosed it in foundation. Black hole bomb, a far spinning black hole, and a big mirror. The mirror has to completely envelop the black hole, which is similar to a Dyson sphere, a megastructure that harvests the energy of an entire star. Although our mirror would be easier to build, mirrors are simpler and black holes are much, much more compact than stars. If we made the mirror 10 centimeters thick, the metal of a big asteroid would probably be enough material for a black hole with the mass of our sun. Yeah, that's Once true. Once our mirror is in place, we only need to open a window and shoot electromagnetic waves at the black hole. You can imagine what happens next by imagining tossing a ball at a wall and it coming back faster than a bullet. The waves hit the black hole at light speed. A small proportion of the waves falls past the event horizon to disappear forever. But a much larger amount sloshes through the ergosphere, where the black hole forces some of its rotational energy on them and amplifies them. They now begin super radiant scattering, which are fancy science words meaning bouncing around between mirror and black hole and getting stronger. Every time they go around, they are getting exponentially stronger. Oh, By but that's bad. In the mirror, we can extract the energy from the waves as fast as they grow which we could use, in theory, to create what would be, for all practical purposes, an endless source of energy for trillions of years. Or that sounds good, up, but... If the waves yeah. are not released, they will continue to get stronger and stronger and take more and more energy from the black hole until the mirror shatters. A supermassive black hole would release as much energy as a supernova, making the bomb the largest explosion any living being could ever create. <laughs> but how you said universe the beauty of the black hole bomb the penrose process and the super radiant scattering is that they are not science fiction in the far far future this might be the only way to survive in our dying universe after all the red dwarfs have cooled down and all the white dwarfs transformed into black dwarfs the universe will turn dark forever Rotating black holes might be the only sources of energy in the entire universe that life could harvest. If so, the last living being in existence might one day end its life around a black hole, which is equally chilling and uplifting. Yeah. It turns out that even without any light, there are places we can go. Yeah. Black holes are as interesting as they are mysterious, but there's actually... That's, that's it, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, it was hard not to pause this one. This one was a bit confusing to me. It might be because I'm not an expert. So I'm not an expert at astrophysics. I'm a quantum physicist. As I said, so, yeah. There were several things I did not really understand what they meant. And so they did not talk about Hawking radiation, which I think, yeah, it's it's, it's fine. Probably don't need to do it. Um, black holes are spinning. Yes. Yes, they are. 
Um, I'm not sure about the mathematics. I think it's the Kerr metric that you have to use to describe a spinning black hole. And I actually don't know. And if someone knows in the comments, please let me know if you know more about this. I would like to know um, whether we've observed spinning black holes. I mean, this ergosphere, yes, obviously, uh, that's in the theory that's quite known. Um, but that would be something I would be interested in. Are there, are there many spinning black holes? They made it look, and that, that was a part I didn't know. So I don't know anything about the spinning stuff because we never covered it in lectures. Um, so are there many or not a lot of spinning black holes? Because first they said, yeah, all black holes are spinning. If I recall correctly, I might be wrong. And then they said some are not spinning, some are static. And um, yeah. That that um, also they said it, it's the tiniest thing, which I don't agree with. If there is a is a black hole like the size of a proton, it would instantly dissipate because of Hodgkin radiation, and yeah, they are some kilometers wide probably, and some are really big. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how much. So yeah, rotational energy, yes, you you can get that probably from the black hole if you have a rocket. But with an asteroid, um, which is accelerating, you would have to accelerate it out of the black hole, I imagine. Same for the light and, and the mirror, I, I think. I'm not that sure about the mirror. I think the mirror thing might work, but the asteroid thing, throwing asteroids into the black hole... Um, I did not understand where the energy is coming from if you th throw an asteroid into the black hole. So do you hope that it disintegrates and you get stuff back from the asteroid that is very fast? I mean, that's probably what they meant, but if you throw an asteroid at a black hole that has an ergosphere, it goes through the ergosphere, it goes back into the black hole, you know, because it's... I'm also not sure how big the ergosphere is. I think it's... it's is it 1.5 times? Size of a black hole? Yeah, let me actually look that up. Let me actually look that up. I, I don't know that. You see, I'm I'm a layman in this area, but yeah. I want to see... I don't want to talk rubbish again. So, the ergosphere. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, How big is it? How big is this? Okay. So it's double, I think. It says it's double. But let me read it for a moment. Yeah, so it's double. So it's double the um, area of the uh, um, of, of the event horizon. If if I read this correctly, I, I yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. Okay. So, yeah. They they are um they are the, the things have to escape the black hole. So, yeah, but I mean, if you have to shoot matter into the ergosphere, what, what speed would that have to be? You would have to accelerate it a lot, a lot, because I mean, the, the gradient there is still very, very, very big. I mean, it's probably a square law, but I don't really know. So, um, yeah, that's... It's, <laughs> They made it look a lot, lot, sound a lot, lot easier to do. Like they, they made it sound like, yeah, there's a black hole, just shoot an asteroid into it. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a lot harder. You have to accelerate stuff like that really, really hard. Um, yeah, and, 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 and 
I don't know. The Ray thing, yes. Yes, that seems interesting. I also like the idea of a, so to speak, Dyson mirror sphere around the black hole. Though the photons that are accelerated, you know, so you don't have a perfect mirror. At least we don't know a perfect mirror. Might. Yeah, because so, so, so it will. I don't know how quick it will be destroyed. So it might even be that, you know, you have this mirror. And it has an absorption of, I don't know, 99.9999%. So there's 0 0.000, I think, 1%. It doesn't absorb. And um, yeah, if you shoot something around the black hole, it bounces off a trillion, no, not a trillion, but a million, a million times per, per second, it will hit and be absorbed by the mirror. And it will be incredibly energy uh, heavy. The, the, the photon, so you will just instantly disintegrate the mirror, I think. I'm not sure if this is a feasible solution. You would have to take a very, very good mirror to do that. And I mean, yeah, it, it can st stand around the black hole and you can do this with the um, ray. But um, yeah, I think the mirror would be destroyed pretty quickly, pretty, pretty quickly. I don't think it's a sustainable solution because we don't have perfect reflective Less. It's just more of a thought experiment. Then the singularity th thing. That is something we don't know. It's the solution of the metric they use. And I, I, as I said, I don't know how the, if it's the Kerr metric, but I think it is. Might be another metric. But if you have a spinning black hole, so you can calculate the singularity. And yet yeah, it's this ring. But we don't apply quantum gravity there because we don't have quantum gravity currently. So that's also something to keep in mind uh, for this. So this this singularity, a term which I've never heard before, but yeah, sounds plausible, might not exist because we don't know anything about the singularity inside the black hole because quantum gravitational effects have to influence it and we do, can't describe those. So yeah. Also, what would be this functionality of the black hole bomb? Um, how you couldn't throw it, you could just, okay, you could also supernova, but yeah, then it takes, what, light years, so years to reach a planet, and if you already can build a black hole bomb, you can just evacuate the planet. I, I don't know what, what the purpose of that would be, but then again, um, humans like to blow stuff up. I don't know. <laughs> um... Yeah, and in the far future, it might be a source of energy for us. That's true. It's true. I mean, there are some kinks they have to work out, and you probably... The, so the mirror, I believe, and they did not make it sound like that. They said, yeah, you could just build that mirror, but I think it's more like it's a metaphor. Um, and not completely, but you could take something that bends light as well, like, in, like a magnetic field, perhaps. If you take charged particles, you might... Um, not build a mirror, but an electric field around it somehow that can uh, redirect things there. And uh, yeah, so was there other stuff I missed? Let me look at the video again. Um, so yeah, end of the universe. Yeah, might be, might be that we have to use that or others have to use it there. And um, might be a good solution to this time when there are no stars anymore to live next to black holes and gobble up their energy. That sounds actually quite lovely. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you liked my little ramblings as well. And um, yeah, I, I did not like the text in this video. Not because it was wrong, but it was confusing and there were some time explanations that you can quite easily misunderstand, I think. And some things that don't make sense if you don't really think about it. Which, yeah, they might want to do that here, but I know there are other videos that normally don't do it like this. There were points where I thought, okay, this, no, come on, this is too much um, of a didactical reduction. And there are things you could um, understand incorrectly from this video. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic. Black holes are always interesting. So anyway, if you like this, consider liking, subscribing. And if you do or if you don't, I still want to say have a great day. Take care of yourself. Bye.